Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you very much for joining me today. Now, with today's Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia video, I'm going to be bringing you another Chaos Roundup. And we have two events to go over this week, which are going to be Lan and Rain's Lost Chapter and Kieran's Character Event. So what you guys will get will be the full rundown of everything that I did when it came to going through these clears, as well as some alternative tactics and some different characters you could use, some examples of characters that other people have used, things like that to help you clear those, those chaos clears before they leave at the end of next week or whenever their events particularly finish. So if that's something that interests you, then stay tuned and keep on watching. Before we get started on all the chaos clears, do take a quick look at all of my social media links in the description box below, which includes my Twitter page, my Discord channel, and especially my Twitch and Patreon channels, as obviously with everything that's going on in the world right now, I'm trying really hard to make sure that I can be as present as I can when it comes to being a content creator, whether that be YouTube or Twitch. We've actually just finished our Doom Eternal and Animal Crossing sort of dual stream, and that went really well, in my opinion, especially as something that's not Opera Omnia for a start. So if that's something that you're interested in, then definitely come and check that out, because I really want to be able to give you guys as much entertainment as possible. And with Patreon in particular, I mean, now that I'm sort of, you know, having to self-isolate at home as well, and I'm now out of work for the next 12 weeks, unfortunately, any support that you guys can give is massively appreciated. Anything that I can do to make this channel better, anything I can do to give you guys a better source of entertainment, then let me know and I will do my best to try and cater to everybody. But as I say in my Patreon channel, I shout out a random patron every time I do a video and this time around it's going to be Hammy. So thank you very much for your support, Hammy, and, and I'm, if you want to be one of the guys who gets shouted out, if you want one of these title cards for yourself, then definitely check it out Check out my Patreon page. And also, of course, don't forget to check out all of the other content creators for Opera Omni as well. There's lots of us, and we all appreciate your likes, your support, your subscribes, all that good stuff just as much as me. So the first event that you can see here was actually cleared on Monday, and that is Lan and Rain's Lost Chapter. Now, in all honesty, I didn't particularly find this event to be all that challenging. And there was an element of challenge to it because it's designed for you to kind of take an imperilar, like the, the most common character that you see used in people's clears of this particular event is Lulu. And at the time, I didn't have Lulu. Now, I have Lulu now, but I don't have the resources, I don't have the ingots, I don't have the power stones to go and put everything into her. I also have Lan and Rain, because I kind of wanted Lan and Rain because they were cute and cool and all of that stuff. But I also didn't have the power stones and ingots to do with them, so I've completely gone against my own advice when it comes to playing. But I wanted them, damn it. So, anyways, going back to the actual clear itself, what you can see here is that I did use Warrior of Light, Faris, and Aranea. Now, I know what you're all thinking. Yes, it's another Aranea clear, but... With Aranea being here, she just made the whole event so much easier because of her, like, a massive amount of damage, her ability to control the field, she just did really well. And the thing that's interesting with this particular team composition is that there's no dedicated support unit, really. We have a tank and we have two damage dealers, or a debuffer and a damage dealer. Faris, being a synergy character in this particular event, was absolutely invaluable. Cannon Fire is an extremely good attack at the best of times, and I'll tell you what, Thunderstorm did so much work. Because not only does it have that amazing effect where you're at, you're hitting the enemies during their attack phases, like they, you know, in these particular enemies, they do large amounts of bravery damage very quickly once they start being excruciatingly irritating and taking like three moves per turn and you have to see every single text box that comes up and then the animation and then there's just like, it takes 10 minutes just to get to your turn and it's infuriating. But Thunderstorm actually plays really well by just letting them just take loads of damage and then all this bravery they've gained becomes much more manageable and then Aranea just kind of sweeps it all away and you haven't got anything to worry about. And then the reason that I used Warrior of Light in this composition and not Zack is because they have a tendency to really like using attacks that uh, hit your entire party. Barsh would have been a really good option for this particular mission as well, uh, you know, because he can ward off AoE HP attacks. But Warrior of Light I felt was more relevant and I wanted to use him because a lot of people have access to Warrior of Light and not a lot of people have access to Barsh or as many people have access to Barsh. But I felt that it was really prudent to use a character that would stop my character taking bravery damage when 
you've got a combination of Faris doing attack down debuffs with alongside Warrior of Light being able to get the occasional heal off, because you'll notice that during this clear, I do take a little bit of HP damage here and there, but it's not anything too strenuous, so I can deal with Warrior of Light being my only source of HP heal. But equally, everyone's bravery is kept up both through Thunderstorm and through Warrior of Light shields. The party brave overflow from Thunderstorm with Sildra's protection is really useful, particularly on Faris herself, because her, you know, her water world's actually not all that fantastic in terms of doing much for the party. It's just an HP attack. Because all of you, you know, you get the enfeeblement, but enfeeblement up buff from Faris's water well, but you don't realistically need it with cannon fire because you get most of the, you get pretty much everything from it anyway. So having all those debuffs is really nice because they don't really buff themselves all that much. So the the dispel's not that big a deal, but equally she's a boosted character. She's going to do extra damage and she's got AOE damage. And Thunderstorm does everything that you realistically need within this fight to have as a support unit, and it's extremely valuable. Aranea is self-explanatory. She does what she does. You don't have to worry too much about her. She's she's just going to get the damage in there. Nothing. They don't resist her outright. The machines at the beginning are really quite easy to manage. You know, it's, it, it's the same booster machines that we fought since Balthea's first event way back when. So honestly, there's a lot of chances for you to practice against booster machines, and we know what they do. So basically, it was just a case of making sure the walls were up, making sure that Thunderstorm went off whenever possible, and being prudent with my EX uses and making sure that I used those before I used any other skills. But I equally wanted to make sure that the turn count was kept low, so I wasn't going to be too stingy with my skill uses, particularly with cannon fire, because, you know, keeping those debuffs up is really valuable, and I just felt that... In order to make the the entire event go through as smoothly as possible, to just having those available is really useful. Annoyingly, there's these two waves of trash mobs within, like, like between the two main fights, and it's kind of annoying. But Aranea puts work in. I think I had to use a superiority ex attack on them just to make sure they were definitely going to die in one turn. Because you really have to be careful with these trash waves not to waste turns trying to just kill them in the most sort of skill effective way possible just get them dead because that's one more turn you could have during the main fight and that could save your backside so just bear that in mind and honestly this event will be absolutely fine if you use the same team composition as me now when it comes to units that i've not used in this particular fight there's actually a lot of flexibility when it comes to this provided you're not necessarily using magic because the bosses do resist magic so if you plan to take say Ultimecia or Emperor or somebody like that, then make sure you take an Imperola with you as well. This is why Lulu is such a prevalent character for this event, because while she's a magic damage dealer, she's got the Imperil, she's got the Enchant, she just increases your damage output greatly for this particular fight. And I've said this before, even though I do did actually pull for Lulu, Lulu is a strange character because she seems like she's being used all the time at the moment, and she is but her shelf life is actually quite short. We will see a massive drop off in Lulu's uses over the next few weeks because there will be other characters that will just take over from her. That's not to say that she's bad, but there will be a lot of other characters that kind of take the spotlight away from her. So don't be too worried if you don't have Lulu. I didn't have Lulu at the time and I didn't use her. Onion Knight is a particularly strong character for this event as well because he has access to the Enchant in Peril, which means that his Blizzard combo and Meteorite aren't going to be resisted, which is great. But equally, his ability to switch in and out between being a single target damage dealer and a multi-target damage dealer is actually very valuable because the bosses in this event don't actually buff themselves if you kill one before the other, at least as far as I know. So that's a, that's a really, really strong option for you as well. Um, you've also got support characters, because I didn't really use a support character in this particular fight. So you could use Rosa, you could use Pinello, you could use Ishtola. Ishtola less so because Stone is resisted, but like Rosa is, is particularly good just because of her auras. Pinello is particularly good because she doesn't have to worry about magic at all. She's just a strong, you know, support unit. There's lots of sort of really good resources out there if you want to you like use Pinello. I've seen a really great video from Kiwi, who is actually on my list of content creators, who has a fabulous video on how to use Pinello effectively. So definitely go and check that out if you haven't already. 
Uh, there's just a lot of options for you that you can use. People are using Gao, people are using Bash, as I said. Zach is also a very viable option. I gave my reasons as to why I chose to use Warrior of Light instead of Zach, but that's not to say that Zach doesn't work. Zach does work very well. I just felt that I like the shields more than the lock at the moment for, the, for this particular fight, though Zach's damage output is much greater than Warrior of Light, so you might find that you'll get a much quicker clear if you decide to use that. Um, you, I mean, some people are like, obviously the Crystal Chronicle uh, podcast for for Opera Omnia like it lists out a challenge of characters you can't use for certain events like this. And like looking at some of the posts that people have done for that, people have used Kimari, people have used Zell, people have used Irvin, people have used Gao. There's loads of characters that people have used to clear this particular event. So honestly. This isn't an event that I would say is massively difficult. As long as you're careful about not letting their bravery get too high, then I wouldn't stress too much about the, the, the event itself. It's actually quite, you know, really quite relatively simple. So now we come over to Kieran's event. Now this one, <laughs> this one I actually did on stream to begin with and it was rough, rough going because I did not pay attention to the fact that the bosses were double range resistant. So this is an event you, you absolutely cannot take Aranea to. She will not do very well for you at all in this particular event unless of course you take it in parallel with you. But I didn't actually take Aranea with me. I've been insistent that I wanted to use Lael because Lael was a character that I was personally excited to give my ingots to because of the score up, you know, being able to increase your score well, well with when it comes to launches. I really wanted to use, I, 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 I will always use Yuri at any given point, but actually the first clear I did was, or tried to do was uh, Lael, Pinello and Ishtola because as we were chatting about it on stream, it was, a, it was a really cool party composition and I thought it would work really well needed more damage to be honest so I actually took Pinello out and changed her for Yuri and that's now the clear that you see here and it's also important to know that because I'm using Leo I'm actually using Pandemonium as my summon here which again in my first clear I didn't use so take that as a sort of point to say be careful which friend unit you take and be careful which summon you take because it does make a massive difference. I took Aranea as a friend unit not paying attention and she did nothing. And then I took Setsa as a friend unit for this particular one and it actually did really well, just alternating between his EX attack and Freeze Joker. Freeze Joker is absolutely fantastic in this fight because these bosses love to just throw out HP damage. And the biggest thing that I, piece of advice I can give to you when it comes to this event is have healers on board. If you don't have good healers, you will struggle with this event. I chose to take Yuri because he has the HP regen on him, on top of the fact that he's actually a very strong damage dealer as well, and the fact that his Chilinka buff also brings party overflow percentage plus. And then obviously you've got Ishtola. We all know how good Ishtola is. Like I don't need to explain how strong she is. I actually ended this fight with more skills left over than I thought I would. So, you know, maybe I was a little bit too strict. I didn't quite hit max score that I probably could have done if I had like been a bit more sort of frugal with my skills and just kind of gone in with it. But between Lael and Ishtola, I have delay like for days. I got no problems with delays or anything. And because they're not magic resistant, then, then there's loads of characters that are open to you that you haven't been able to use for a little while because there have been a lot of magic resistant events. So characters like Ultimisia and Emperor and characters like that. And then Imperilers are still going to do well in this event. So Lulu will still do well here. But with this particular event, all you need to worry about is taking consistent HP damage because you will take a lot of it. Zack is an option for you, though do bear in mind just that you're going to be he's going to be taking a lot of hits over the course of time and he can heal himself and he can ward the spear shots from the opponents to himself but any aoe hp attacks he's not going to be able to deal with so the brio shots that you have to deal with that are the ones that actually inflict the debuff that make you drain your health zach's not going to be so helpful for that but he's still going to be a great character because apocalypse isn't resisted for once so it means you're going to get good damage out of that 
you're also going to be able to heal himself, so he'll ward off the spear shots really well. And then maybe Zack and Ishtola can keep you healed up. Penelo is very good for this because of her regen waltz, like she's got HP regen. Warrior of Light could also work here because of his ability to put up walls and regenerate HP. Or anyone that has access to healing potencies and things like that. And you also do have to bear in mind that you need to be dealing damage at the same time as all of this. So this is why I think that like hybrid characters like Zack and Yuri, so defensive and offensive options, are going to be really, really valuable to you in this particular fight. The behemoths in the beginning aren't too bad, like as long as you just get rid of them one at a time, because I mean I chose to try to take them out one at a time, just to try and get through them as quickly as possible, because they don't buff each other when they're dead. Although I was quite stingy with Yuri's abilities at the beginning of this fight, and then I look, it had some left over, so again I probably could have been a bit quicker if I just gone all guns blazing with Yuri because obviously whenever he uses his EX he gets skills back and his EX is 100% AoE damage split between two bosses. It's really really strong. So this is why I've taken the team that I chose to take. So I went with Yuri and then Lael. I haven't even talked about Lael but Lael's done uh, and then obviously Ishtola. Lael is a character that I've been excited to use as I said but his delay and his ability to battery and during a summon, Lael is absolutely catastrophic. He can do so much damage. If you're using Pandemonium, that means that if you're using Ishtola and you're if you're using Ishtola just to battery, and then you have Yuri's chilling cover, like regening bravery out the wazoo, and then Lael also battering with energy gain and delaying to kind of set up really good launches, your damage output is really strong. But Again, do bear in mind that Lael is a boosted character for this event, which is partly why I took him. And he's not always going to be able to do quite so much damage uh, quite so efficiently. But I still think he's a really good character. So going into alternative tactics, things that other people have done and other characters that you could use for this event. I said at the beginning to absolutely under no circumstances take Aranea. You actually can as long as you take an Imperiler like Lulu with you, an Imperial slash Enchanter with you like Lulu. Because that way she's no longer going to be outright resisted and she's still going to be really valuable in the party where you're facing multiple bosses. Because she still churns out damage like a crazy person. She still controls the board better than Lael can. and But she doesn't obviously have the launches that he does but that's pretty much the only thing that she's missing. So if you have the ability to take Aranea out with a, an Imperil Enchanter then that is an option for you. But there are quite a lot of characters that people have used with this. Cryo is a character that comes up quite a lot because she's synergy, she's strong, she does. She obviously can regenerate bravery really well. She's got a lot going for her and the weakness damage plus is actually very valuable. Uh, Ignis I've seen get used a fair amount. Ignis is a usable option because he's not a magic based support character. He's got plenty of healing. Regroup will get you out of any sticky situation, so that's really useful as well. Ishtola is probably the most common character that you'll see when it comes to this when it comes to this particular fight, just because Pulse of Life just snaps its fingers and there's your health back again after anything goes particularly wrong. And one interesting team I've seen included Agrius and Rosa, because I would not have suggested Rosa for this team this particular fight because of the horrible situation you are where if you're between 50 and 80% health you don't actually get Rosa's prayer buff, and that can be a real pain in the butt. But Agrius has an HP regeneration, and then Rosa can regenerate HP through Luminous Arrow. So we, I can see how that would work as well. Um, you've also got like Zack again. Zack will work as well because he can ward off all these HP attacks. As I've said, he's very, very useful. Edge would also be very useful, particularly if you're using Cryo. If you go back and look at my Dimensions End Clear, then you can see just how good Edge and Cryo are together. There is no reason why they wouldn't be able to do the same thing here because you have a character, two characters that are completely based around the Thunder element, somebody in Cryo that can boost damage from Thunder, or from weakness damage at least, and then Imperil Thunder, and then Edge where all of his attacks are Thunder and you're getting the smoke screen, and then his ridiculous EX attack where you're just not taking any damage for a while. If you can time that correctly so that you don't take the Brio shots, then that's going to be really useful. But do bear in mind that if you're using that duo, neither of them can regenerate HP, so make sure your third character is a character that can do so. And then Yuri, again, like, I mean, like, I, I used Yuri here, and, but he can be your HP healer. Like, he has got a lot of HP regen in his kit, so that's another character that a lot of other people have used. And then 
that's pretty much it. There's a lot of characters that you can use here. As long as you cover your bases and just come in and prepare yourself for a large number of HP attacks and you prepare yourself to lose HP a lot during this fight, whether it be through the debuff that takes it away from you, whether it be through just constant spear shots, because there will be a lot of spear shots, and just keeping your bravery up so that when they do their sweep attack, they don't just break all your characters and you instantly die, because if your party gets broken in any fight, it's a surefire way that you know you're just going to fall over and die. So as long as you don't make that happen, then you will be fine. I tried to be cheeky by taking like two healers and Lael and thinking that Lael could do it all by himself, and it didn't work out too well. I also took Brothers and Aranea as my friend unit and summon, and it did not work. So if, unless you've got the Imperial Enchanter, like I said, ranged characters are a big no-no. But also, depending on, if, if I weren't taking uh, Pandemonium to this event, I would consider maybe Ramu for extra defense as well as the Max Bravery buff, maybe rather than, say, you know, Brothers, because that, like defense is a stat that we overlook an awful lot, but when enemies are throwing quite so many attacks out at you, it could actually be valuable in a way you don't know. And if you're using somebody like Kryal, then Ramu is really valuable because obviously Ramu is Thunder Element so that you can then capitalize on Kryal more during a summon. So do bear that kind of thing in mind when you're building your team composition for these particular events. So that is going to be it for this week's Chaos Roundup. I hope that this video has given you some clarity on the things that you can do during these events while they're still available, give you some insight into how I go about clearing these events, and hopefully a little bit of insight into how other people do too. Because as I say, I go try and go through information that I find online to see what other people are doing so that I can give you guys different team compositions, different ideas on people you could use, different ways of thinking about going about these events and things like that. So hopefully it'll help you to clear these events for yourself. As I've said earlier, don't forget to check out all of my social media in the description box below, including Discord, Twitter, Twitch, all that good stuff. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video and click the bell for any notifications. Next week we'll have, the, hopefully the Spring Festival should start on Monday and that one's a little bit of a mystery still. Some people are envisioning that we'll get a banner with it that maybe will bring Selfie early or Aerith even I've heard about a couple of times down the grapevine. So maybe we'll see an early release for somebody and that can always be very exciting. And then we also have the next level 70 Awakening batch that will feature Papalimo in Seymour and it depresses me greatly because I know I'm going to have to pull for Seymour because he's part of my villain collection. But that's a discussion for another day. So tune back on Monday if you'd like to hear more about the things coming out next week and hopefully I will see you guys soon. Thank you ever so much for joining me and I'll speak to you guys later. Bye bye. Thank you.